Hey guys, uh, for you, this is an update for you guys that got the multiple Harper Freight kits and you're wanting to do what I did with the backup lighting. Well, if you guys already watched my videos, I had a problem with voltage drop. Uh, what I did is my maximum length of that cable I was running to each room was uh, 105 foot. And I managed to get my longest run down to 75 feet. That helped me out. Also, I was showing that I had 12.7 volts in my bank. <clears throat> and 12.1 on my controller here. That I'm only using for distributing the power. Uh, what I did is I also balanced the load between the two of these controllers. And I also uh, spread the uh, negative and positive across each end of the bank so it would be more balanced. Uh, draw across the bank itself because I had them both connected right here. So what I did, I got this here and that right there and uh, that's 12 gauge. And what was originally that come with the uh, Hopper Freight controller was, I'd say it was close to 20, 22 gauge. Very small. So, putting the 12 on there. And also, for you guys that don't have a single controller yet, and you're using the multiple Hopper Freight kit controllers, uh, which I was doing originally, if you, uh, if you take you run, uh, 12 gauge for your battery here and you know jump jump um, and run you a single line from all your uh, panels outside from your kits a single 12 gauge line up in here and do the same thing here on your solar half jump jump I had three controllers <coughs> for my four kits because each one of these are 4 amp controllers so that worked out pretty good for me for a while. But the only problem is, you get so many of these controllers, each one of these controllers draw their own little bit of power. So, <clears throat> getting rid of all the multiple controllers and getting one charge controller, I was able to gain another quarter amp of uh, power that could go directly in my batteries and not being consumed by all these controllers. And, um, also, I ran a test over a week. Uh, I told you that those, all those lights draw just over 3 amps. So, I was able to run that a week, every night. Uh, weekends were probably from, oh, 6 to 3 o'clock in the morning. 6 p.m. to 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I came home from work, it was probably about midnight to 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. a night. Um, also, I ran the jet stream oven uh, for probably about approximately 20 minutes on the same charge, <coughs> which is 130 amps on the DC side. I ran the dishwasher once on the same charge. That's approximately 87 amps on the DC sign. Also ran toaster oven, but I, I'm not sure how many amps on the DC side that is. Uh, so, I probably could have ran all those lights for two weeks straight without any charging. So, um, highly unlikely that you're not going to get any charge during two weeks, you know, so... And by the way, stepping up to the 12 gauge between the controller, the controllers, and the battery bank, now only have a difference of 0.1 instead of 0.6 volts. And shortening up my my cable length, all my lights, um, will help the voltage stay up higher, which kept my amperage down a little bit more as well. And on the longest run, which was 75 feet, I only had a half volt difference 
between the controller and the lights. So that turned out pretty good. So anyway, if you guys got any questions, let me know, comment, subscribe. Catch y'all later.